Hello everybody, I'm Michael, a member of the Hubs team, and this video goes over the more advanced features that are available for moderating a Hubs room. Now this video is perfect if you already understand the Hubs basics and some of the more advanced features that you can use. We'll begin this video a little bit more conceptual before diving into the Room Info and Settings panel as well as the Object and People menu. Follow along with the documentation that I've linked below and let's get started. All right, so to get started, we're actually going to take a step back and talk about what is a hub's room and what is a hub scene. And there's a fantastic article on Creator Labs, which I highly recommend you look at, which explains in much more detail than we'll go over here. But essentially, think of a scene as a template or a mold from which you can make as many rooms as you want. Any edits that you make to the scene will then propagate to all of the rooms that have been created from it. The owner of a scene is the person who created it in the first place, and even though other people can make rooms from the same scene, their ownership of that project will allow them to control what is set at the scenic level. Now, ownership of rooms works a little bit differently from ownership of scenes. Whoever creates the room URL from a given scene is by default that room's owner, and meaning that they have full permission for that room and that that permission can't be revoked. They can't hop into a room that was created by someone else and still have those permissions, even if it was made from the same scene. They only have ownership over the room that they create. There can only be one owner per room. However, you can promote other users who come into your space, giving them access to many of the moderation tools that are also available to room owners. We'll demonstrate this here by going to Join Room. And once inside of our hubs room, we can go to the top right people tab and whichever usernames have a star next to them, here it's a blue star, sometimes it's a pink star, that means that they are a promoted user. Now I'm going to log in on a separate browser and we'll see that the new user who joined Michael2 has not been given a star next to their name since this is the first time that they've joined. As an unpromoted user, Michael2 will only have access to the features which I, the room owner, or other promoted room moderators give them access to. A quick note that if you do promote other users to be able to moderate your room, they will have access to many more features than default users. Be careful who you share room moderation permissions with. I'd like to demonstrate how I, as a room owner, can promote other users to have permissions to moderate a room. And to do so, I've split my screen in two. The left side is the room owner, and the right side is the user I would like to promote. Now, to be promoted, first you have to sign in. And to do this, you'll go to the More menu, which is those three vertical dots. In my screen right now, it's in the top left. And then you'll go to the first item, Sign In. Here, you'll enter a valid email address and click Next. Then you'll wait for the email to appear in your inbox. Once it does, click on the link that it has sent you. It should open a separate browser tab and then give you a notification that verification is complete. And I've seen in my browser that it tells me that I'm now signed in. I'll click Continue, and then as the room owner, I'll go to the People menu in the top right click on the name of the user I wish to promote, and then click that Promote button. Now the Promote button is green. If the user is not signed in, it will be blurred out gray. So I click Promote, it asks me if I'm sure, I click Yes, and then when I go back to the People menu, I see that that user has a blue star next to their name. And this user can now access room info and settings and edit them and go through all of the different features that we're going to run through now. Splendid. So now let's look at what features the room owner and its promoted users have access to. All of these are located under the More menu in the bottom right, and then Room Info and Settings about midway down our pop-up. When we click that, we'll see a pop-up on the right. A room owner and its promoted users will have access to this button all the way in the top right that says Edit. Now when we click on this, we can begin to actually make changes to the room. The first bit of configurable settings is around the room and some descriptive info. The first is changing the scene, which allows you to switch to a different environment. Here, if we click Change Scene, we have a number of environments that are available. I'll change it to the Gathering Call made by the Hubs team. 
The next bit of information is the room name, which will actually be reflected in the URL. So let's change it to Michael's gathering room. And when I change it, we can see in the URL, now I have Michael's gathering room reflected up there. The next bit of information is the room description, which is a great way to give your attendees some information about the event they're attending. Next is the room size, which controls the number of non-promoted users who can access the scene at a given time. If you want to completely seal off your room, you will set it to zero, which means that no new unpromoted users will be able to join. They'll only be able to spectate. Next, we have room access, which controls whether or not people need an invite link to be able to join the room. If we change the room access to invite only, we'll see a room link has been generated, which looks very similar, except it has a unique ID at the end that will be needed in order to access the room. At any time, you can also revoke this invite link by clicking revoke and yes. Next, we have member permissions, which is a very important section, which will control a lot of the feature access for non-promoted users. The first two are voice and chat, which will disable the buttons that allow people to unmute themselves and send messages in the chat. The next is the object permissions. First, you can enable or disable users' ability to create and move objects at all. The next is the permission to create cameras, those little tools that allow you to spawn in images. And finally are the ability to pin objects, which means the ability to persist an object in a room even after you've left. Now it's important to think about the individual circumstances of your event when deciding whether or not to create or remove objects. For instance, this could allow users to spawn in quite a few or very, very heavy objects, which can decrease the performance of the scene for other users. You also want to make sure, if you're allowing folks to pin and unpin objects, that you're not allowing users to undo some of your work if you've gone in before and pinned objects precisely where they need to be. The next permission is drawings, which enables and disables the access to the pen tool. If you have too many pictures being drawn in space, it can be quite disruptive and can also decrease the performance of your scene. The next is the toggle for creating emojis, which I almost never disable, especially since they are pretty lightweight models and they automatically disappear after a certain amount of time. Lastly is the permission to allow or disallow flying, which can be important if you want to make sure that users don't see any rough edges of your 3D modeling by being able to clip through the floor. Once you have your room member permissions and room info set to where you want it, you can hit apply and it will take place for all non-promoted users. There are two more tools which are important to know about as a room moderator. The first is the people menu in the top right, which we've talked about briefly, but I want to show more in depth some of the tools that are available there. So I'm going to click on Michael2, the user who I'm going to moderate. And here we see a few different tools at our disposal. The first is the ability to mute and change the volume of a user. Now, it's important to distinguish these two. The mute button will mute the user for everyone else in the scene, but temporarily. They can easily unmute at any given time. The audio control only controls their audio stream for yourself. You don't control their audio stream for everyone else in the room. The next feature is the promote or demote button in this case. Here I'm going to demote the user to remove those moderator permissions. The next button is the hide button, which toggles the visibility of an avatar in the space. Now it's important to note that this effect only takes place for the user who clicks the button. If I am a room moderator or a room owner and click hide, it will only take effect for myself and not everyone else in the room. This is similar to the audio input control. If you want to more permanently remove someone from a scene, you'll use the kick button. Now, just like the mute button, this effect is only temporary. After kicking someone, if you wish for them to completely stay out of your room link, you need to go in and either change the invite link that you're using 
or set the room capacity to zero so that they will be unable to join back in the room and continue to disrupt. The second tool is the object menu located right next to the people menu in the top right. If I click on this, I can see a full list of the interactable objects in the space. Now to demonstrate, I've spawned in this little duck in front of me and I'm going to manipulate it from the object menu. If I search through there, I can see that the very bottom item in the list is the duck. I'll click on it to select it. And then I can see that I have this object preview here that allows me to look in more detail. From here, I can do a few things. I can either pin the object in the space. I can see the URL where it's hosted. I can bring my avatar right up next to it to view it. Or I can delete it. Now, if you're a room moderator and folks start spawning in a bunch of objects, or you just want to clear out all the objects that have been spawned in the room from the past, this is a great way to go through and manually delete those objects without having to search and find them in different areas of the space. All right, so that covers a lot of the features that are available for a room owner or a room moderator to control what other participants have access to in their hub's room. Now it's always important to consider the individual context of the event or room that you're trying to moderate. If you have any questions or want advice on moderating larger events, I recommend you join the Hubs Discord to get that advice. Thanks so much and check out the other videos to see what else you can do in Hubs.